Hello, my name is Carol Alexander. I'm the author of Practical Financial Econometrics, which is volume two of the Market Risk Analysis series. There are many other books on econometrics, some of which are specifically on financial econometrics. So what distinguishes this book from the rest? Well, there are two main reasons. The first, I think, is that I have a fairly good understanding of what constitutes a relevant problem for practitioners. For example, my treatment of hedging focuses on real-world hedging situations rather than on high-frequency minimum variance hedge ratios, which aren't necessarily things that are important in practice. The second difference between this textbook and the other textbooks on financial econometrics is the level at which I've written. As with all the other textbooks in the Market Risk Analysis series, I've provided a CD-ROM with interactive Excel spreadsheets. And the reason that I do this is that I'm following my golden rule, which is never to write down a mathematical formula unless I can program it in Excel. Now, that isn't always possible. For example, in this textbook, I've had to provide some eViews code on Markov switching models. But generally speaking, I've programmed copulas in Excel, Garch models in Excel, although I have to say that the Excel solver really does have to stretch itself when it's maximizing the likelihood of a Garch model. Nevertheless, it's instructive. It's a tool for teaching, not just in a formal classroom, but for any practitioners that want to learn on the job. There are eight chapters in the book. The first is on factor models. These are the models that we use primarily as returns models to form optimal portfolios. I focus on the Barra model, which has also become a standard tool for measuring portfolio risk in the same context as portfolio returns. But if you use the tracking error as a risk metric, then that's actually only a proper risk metric if you have a passive portfolio. So there's no point in using a factor model at all because you're just replicating an index in the case of a passive portfolio. For an actively managed portfolio, tracking error is not an appropriate risk metric. The next part of the book moves on to volatility and correlation, starting with the basic models, the moving averages, either equally weighted or exponentially weighted, and then Garch models. There's a very long chapter on Garch models. I program Excel, as I said before, to estimate student T E Garch models and so forth. Actually, a very good model, the student T E Garch model. Then there's a chapter on copulas and their applications to quantile copular regressions. These are fairly recent innovations in the academic literature. So it was quite an effort to make all this material accessible to somebody with, say, shall we say, knowledge of volume one, because that volume provides all the mathematical background you need in order to understand the subsequent volumes. The chapter on advanced regression models introduces quantile regressions, Markov switching, discrete choice models, and as usual, everything apart from the Markov switching is programmed into interactive Excel spreadsheets. The book ends with a chapter on forecasting and model evaluation, both from a statistical viewpoint and from an operational perspective. Econometrics has become something of a motorway for academics into finance. But too often, we find that publications are addressed towards problems that just aren't relevant to practitioners. So the aim of this textbook is to focus this wonderful research effort into more practical financial problems.